Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 169, Adoration On the morning of the next day, there was a special guest that came to the Shen Mansion. The person who came was none other than Feng and Ning. After the previous incident where Shen Miao and Lu Tan was kidnapped, Feng and Ning really took the initiative to come over to apologize after everything. Shen Xin and wife were forthright people and moreover Feng and Ning could not be blamed for the incident and one could only blame those kidnappers for having superior methods. Even though Shen Xin and wife mentioned that it was not a serious issue and both Shen Miao and Lu Tan did not put it to heart. Feng and Ning however seemed to be very regretful about it. Other than sending people over every three to five days to gift some small playthings, she no longer came over. Most likely she felt that she did not know how to face Shen Miao and Lu Tan that even when Lu Tan sent an invite to Feng and Ning, she would refuse it. One did not expect that she would take the initiative to come over. Once Lu Tan heard that Feng and Ning came, she was very happy and pulled Shen Miao before running to the front hall. In the Ding capital, other than Shen Miao, Feng and Ning was Lu Tan's only friend. One of them was shrewish but straightforward, the other was bold and unconstrained, both were similar to the other. Because of the previous matter, Lu Tan had not seen Feng and Ning for a long time and was somewhat impatient. Upon arriving in the main hall, one really saw Lu Zhu Yan talking to Feng and Ning. Feng and Ning was wearing a white short jacket dress with her hair up in a ponytail and wearing pearl earrings and ceramic glazed hairpin, looking much more quieter than her usual self. Lu Tan took the lead and called out, Feng and Ning, and ran over. Shen Miao however had noticed that beside where Feng and Ning was standing, there sat a young person in the early twenties. This youth's brows were beautiful and was wearing a blue fitting robes with a gentle and well-mannered look. When he noticed that Shen Miao was looking at him, he nodded his head to Shen Miao lightly. His etiquettes were very detailed. There were some similarities with Feng and Ning with his eyes. Lu Tan only then noticed that there was another person and said, this is. Lu Zhu Yan was somewhat embarrassed. It was not appropriate to let two young females see a male outsider without any rhyme or reason but thinking of the reason of Feng and Ning's visit, she felt in somewhat of a difficulty and could not say if she was happy or guilty. It was Feng and Ning who took the initiative to speak. This is my elder brother. Shen Miao suddenly understood. There were only Feng and Ning and her eldest brother, Feng Zizhan who were the Feng family's deborn. This person would be her eldest brother, Feng Zizhan. Feng Zizhan stood up and cup his hands to greet Shen Miao and Lu Tan. Shen Miao and Lu Tan quickly returned the gesture. Lu Tan looked at Feng Zizhan somewhat doubtfully at Feng Zizhan before looking at Feng and Ning again and asked, An Ning, are you not here today to look for us to play? If Feng and Ning come over to look for Shen Miao and Lu Tan, she would not bring Feng Zizhan over. However this made one astonished as one did not know what Feng and Ning's intention was. Feng and Ning did not speak and only looked towards Feng Zizhan. Feng Zizhan looked a little embarrassed but still spoke first. Today one came over because one had head Shen Kaiyu's brothers in the military department mentioning that honored residence was seeking for an son-in-law. This one, this one is so bold as to recommend oneself. May young lady and Furin overlook the aspect of the abruptness. Finishing, his face turned reddish and avoided Lu Tan's gaze. Lu Zhu Yan was somewhat embarrassed but there was joy in her eyes. Lu Tan's mouth dropped as if she had not expected that the other party came over for this reason. Shen Miao was startled but she could not pinpoint what her feeling was. This Feng Zizhan's words were considered very daring. Anyone who came over to matchmake would always get another to lobby for them. Either it was their parents who would come over to probe, there would be extremely little that they themselves would come over to speak about it. However even if the younger generation come over, the older generation would be invited so that etiquette would still be followed. When this spreads out, others would speak much about Shen Miao's innocence. He was indeed a very well-mannered person. Shen Miao did not speak but Feng and Ning actively spoke. She looked at Shen Miao. The usual Feng and Ning who was always so proud had reduced her arrogance so much. Most likely because she still felt guilty about the matter before and her tone of voice was somewhat tempting to please her. 
We have all heard about the rumors, now all the officials' families are all avoiding but it is not your best choice to marry into the Eastern Palace. It is better. It is better to marry my eldest brother. My eldest brother is good at both literary and military matters and is dependable. If you marry to our residence, I will also help you and there will always be one to take care. Feng and Ning had always been one who did not know how to make turns thus she spoke very straightforwardly and honestly but was thinking of Shen Miao in all aspects. Lu Zhu Yan's face became much softer and warmer than before. Shen Miao asked, does Feng Furin and Master Feng know about it? Feng and Ning hesitated for a moment before saying, initially father did not agree but afterwards after our persuasion. He went along with us. My father is one who has a quick sharp mouth but a tofu heart. He is very vocal but he definitely would not block this matter. Shen Miao did not doubt this point at all. She knew that Feng and Ning was one who was not calculating and guessed that Master Feng was also one who was above it. She then looked at Feng Zi's yawn again and asked, does gentleman Feng think that I am pitiful so one then lend a helping hand and marry me? When these words were out. Everyone was startled. Lu Zhu Yan was at a daze that Shen Miao did not have a trace of shyness or any emotions in her lifetime event. It was indeed strange to treat it so calmly. Feng Zi's Yan did not expect that Shen Miao would ask such a question that straightforwardly. He quickly recovered to his senses. This one's younger sister had mentioned about young lady numerous times and Zi's Yan admires young lady's artistic talents and temperament. This time, it was also a coincidence opportunity, else one dare not take assistive measures. After finishing, his face became redder. When Lu Tan heard it, she laughed out. Shin Miao was somewhat weak all over. She really did not know how did Feng and Ning describe herself normally that artistic talents and temperament were used. Feng and Ning looked at Shen Miao anxiously. My eldest brother is definitely better than the crown prince. Shin Miao almost laughed out. If these words fell into the ears of other, one would say Feng and Ning as being disrespectful. However for Feng and Ning to be able to say these words, it meant that she had sincerely placed Shen Miao in her heart. Shin Miao looked at Feng Zizhan, who looked similar to Feng and Ning magnanimous facial features. He should be an honest and straight person. Shin Miao smiled. One cannot settle my marriage in just a few short words. This would not be fair to me and also to gentleman Feng. Lu Zhu Yan heard Shen Miao's words and had other thoughts in her heart. Shen Miao clearly had different thoughts of her marriage. However as a mother, one did not know what exactly Shen Miao was intending to do. Shen Miao was not willing to marry to the Eastern Palace and was not interested with these young talented characters. Lu Zhu Yan was somewhat anxious. One had thought that no one dared to go against the Imperial family and come over to the Shen Mansion to propose marriage. Unexpectedly there came three, Lu Ling. Su Ming Feng and Feng Zizhan. Either one of them would make one satisfied but Shen Miao unfortunately did not see anything special about all of them. Feng and Ning said, but aren't you anxious? There is almost no time left. These words were not false as no one knew when the imperial edict would be passed down. If it was previous, naturally there would be a lot of time for Shen Miao to think clearly but now if the imperial edict was passed down then there would be no room for change at all. Shen Miao waved his hands and just as she was about to speak, suddenly she saw Jing's ran over in a rush, young lady, someone from the palace has arrived. Lu Zhu Yan's face turned white in an instance, not daring to let others discover that the siblings of the Feng family was here. Lu Zhu Yan brought Shen Miao to the front hall to receive the message. Once the young eunuch who came to speak was done, they then know that it was not that an imperial edict was passed and it was just to let Shen Miao enter the palace alone tomorrow as the empress had some things to say to Shen Miao. After the young eunuch left, Lu Zhu Yan's face becomes extremely ugly. Even though there was no imperial edict, it was not much better than that. Tomorrow Shen Miao would enter the palace alone and if at that time the imperial edict was brought up, Shen Miao would not be able to refuse by herself. Even if it was not mentioned, 
one did not know what kind of intimidating words the Empress would say. It was a sinister motive to let Shen Miao meet with the Empress alone. Feng and Ning and Feng Ziyan were somewhat worried and conversely it was Shen Miao that advised them not to place it in their hearts. After the Feng siblings left, Lu Tan then asked, Youngest Biao sister, what can be done now? Could it be that the marriage will be settled in these days? The marriage cannot be settled overnight. Eight characters needs to be exchanged, the necessary people has to be invited to speak and there are many other matters to settle. It would not be in time for tomorrow. Shin Miao said. Lu Tan stared blankly, so there are still so many things. She then continued. Youngest Biao sister does know it clearly. Shen Miao paused a while. Of course she was clear with it. It was because in her previous life she was filled with joy as she watched each of these things were completed and could not wait to marry into the residence of her loved one early. But she did not know that it was a tomb that did not even spit out one's bone after it has eaten cleanly. Lu Zhu Yan looked towards Shen Miao seriously. Zhao Zhao, tell mother of these people. Who do you like? It not considered as like. Shin Miao smiled gently, just pick the one most suitable. Mother do not need to be overly anxious. It is not too late for me to decide after returning from the palace tomorrow. Maybe there would be even more suitable people appearing. Lu Zhu Yan was startled. Shin Miao always looked at her marriage without a care and seemed not to have any expectation for her future husband which made Lu Zhu Yan panic in her heart. It was until when Shen Miao left before she muttered to herself. Could it be that Zhao Zhao still have feelings for Prince Ding? Shen Miao did not know these thoughts from Lu Zhu Yan at all. She had already made plans for the worst case scenario and it was none other than to burn both Jade and the common stone with the imperial family. She had the strong determination but did not know if the Fu family people have plans to abandon their reputation. Even in the worst cause scenario. She could not lose one's hope since one had to continue living. As she thought like this, she looked over at the windows and finally felt a bit annoyed before instructing Gu Yu, close the windows tighter. I want to rest. The crown prince had the intention to marry Shen Miao as a secondary consort which made the current situation of official families not daring to engage with the Shen family at all. The matter was in such an abuzz that it naturally also spread into the ears of the princes. In the residence of Prince Zhu, the two brothers, Prince Zhu and Prince Jing, were sitting in front of the table discussing of the matter. After fighting with number six for so long, one did not expect that the crown prince exploit a loophole. Prince Zhu drank the wine indignantly. The crown prince looked honest usually and is now smart. Prince Jing was calmer than his older brother and shook his head. The way I see it, this matter is not only the crown prince's idea and also imperial father's incitement. Imperial father is not satisfied with us and Prince Li's clique since the crown prince was still the rightful one. Imperial father helped the crown prince in bias, thus wanted to gift the Shen family army's power to the crown prince. Imperial father is also old and confused. Prince Shu sneered. It is always said that abler people does more work. That invalid and sickly crown prince did not think that even if the military power of the Shen family fall into his hands, how many years can he use it? It might be possible that one does not need to wait for it to warm up when one breathe one's last and then it would have given others a cheap advantage. These words were very vicious as it had the meaning of almost cursing the crown prince to die early, even as such. Prince Shu's tone was filled with jealousy as one had to know what if the crown prince gained the military power of the Shen family, not only his power and influence would grow, not only could he fight with him and Prince Li as equals, he might be able to exceed them. The crown prince had the unique advantage of being the rightful successor and in addition to the Shen family's military power. With such odds, how could Prince Shu not be anxious so as to speak? At the beginning one might as well let that little girl of the Shen family marry to number 9. It is better than the crown prince. Prince Shu said solemnly. Number 9? Prince Jing's smile was profound. Fourth older brother, number 9 is not as simple as you and I think. You are speaking about Shen Wan and Prince Ken's matter? Prince Shu had a sense of uncertainty, no matter how one looks. 
there was someone behind inciting the matter, even if it is true, then it only indicate that he has that ambition. Speaking the truth, between us nine brothers, which one does not have any ambitions to that throne? Number nine did not take any sides as he want to stand alone. With such ambitions, one have to have that ability first. One don't even participate much in the court matter on usual days so which official was willing to follow him? Fu Zayu Yi and Shen Wen were very close in secret and there was also an unclear relationship with the crown prince of Qin country. When this was heard by the other princes, they were wary of Fu Zayu Yi but did not place him on the first position. There was no other reason except that Fu Zayu Yi did not participate in court matters for many years so even if he had that ambition, he did not have the strength. It was just one who had the heart higher than heavens and life as thin as paper. Comparing with him, the arch enemy was more important. Prince Jing shook his head fourth older brother should not underestimate number nine. I always felt that he hid himself deeply. Prince Xu waved his hands impatiently, without any rhyme or reason, why keep on mentioning number nine? Today I called you over as there is a matter to be discussed. Prince Zhu lowered his voice, we cannot just watch as the military power of the Shen family land in the hands of the crown prince. If the crown prince gain the military power and the imperial grandson is born now, Imperial father would have the intention to support and our chances would become even smaller. I have fought with Prince Li for so many years and do not want the crown prince to gain such cheap advantage. Fourth older brother's meaning is, this marriage cannot be tied together. Prince Xu smiled cruelly, the best to become enemies instead. There are thousands of methods to create enmity, which one does fourth older brother pick? Prince Jing asked. Naturally it is blood feud. Prince Zhu placed his wine cup down, that little girl of the Shen family previously thought about number 9 wholeheartedly and definitely not willing to marry the crown prince. In this case our imperial family would not force someone to do anything, so why not free her instead? It is not easy to take action on Shen Miao. Prince Jing said, after the last time Shen Miao was kidnapped by others, Shen Xin had double the number of guards she had and now she is heavily guarded so how can action be taken? Prince Xu smiled, it is not possible outside but it is possible in the palace. He was immensely proud of himself, after entering the palace, no matter what kind of guard they are, they all have to wait outside. Upon entering the palace, it will be our world. I had inquired and know that the little girl of the Shen family would be coming into the palace alone tomorrow. After she had entered and seen the Empress, it would be our opportunity and it would be the easiest thing to do at that time. Prince Jing said, it is easy to take action in the palace but it is easily to be suspected upon investigation. So this is a matter where one can strike two eagles down with an arrow. Prince Xu smiled, you say? Why not make it look like it is from number six's hands? Prince Jing eyes lit up. Both brothers and Prince Li's clique had been fighting for so many years and none of them came up on top. If this time Shen Miao met an accident in the palace, with Shen Xin's love for Shen Miao, he would place the blame onto the crown prince. If it was not the crown prince's intention of marrying Shen Miao, Shen Miao would not encounter the accident thus it could be considered as the Shen family and the crown prince became enemies. At the end when Prince Li was discovered as the mastermind, Prince Li would not benefit from it. Without utilizing one soldier or striking a single blow, to clear up two rivals, what was there against it? Prince Jing Salt, fourth older brother's idea is not bad but one have to carefully arrange it and remove all the flaws. Someone come and invite my aides in. Coincidentally when the residence of Prince Zhu was discussing about the assassination of Shen Mi Al tomorrow, the residents of Prince Li were also racking their minds over the matter. Prince Li smiled at the two brothers in front of him, what do you all think? Prince Xiang had a cautious and timid character and as he was looking at Prince Li's appearance, he could not help but shudder. Prince Li had always been a smiling face tiger, on the surface he would have an amiable appearance but there were a lot of vicious things that he had done over the years. He said, would it be too risky? Prince Chen heard it and said, 
what risk is there? One could not really let the crown prince marry the young lady of the Shen family and for no rhyme or reason gain the military power of the Shen family. Sixth older brother and prince Zhu had been fighting for so many years and there was still no result to it and that crown prince is sickly. He is not afraid that he had the life to obtain it but none to enjoy. Prince Chen had always talked straightforwardly and did not care about consequences. These words were very impudent but it was obviously in line with Prince Li's heart. Eighth younger brother did not say incorrectly. It was not my wish to see Crown Prince gaining the military power of the Shen family. If this marriage is successful, not only me but both brothers would also be implicated. This cannot happen. I propose to assassinate the young lady of the Shen family so that one can spare all later troubles. Even though the young lady of the Shen family is innocent, it can be said that she was also implicated by the crown prince. Prince Li talked about the assassination in all smiles. Even though his words were very sympathetic towards innocent Shen Miao. There were no traces of mercy in the tone used. But how does one push this matter to Prince Zhu? Prince Xiang asked softly. Prince Zhu's usual actions are arrogant and it is reasonable that he would do things on impulse and imperial father had been very vocal about him. Moreover when supporting the crown prince, imperial father would only blame him if one lost the Shen family military power because of Prince Zhu. Prince Li muttered on, one arrow two eagles. It is a good idea. Prince Chen said with wide grins, I support sixth older brother. Prince Xiang did not speak but it did not matter if he did not speak. Both he and Prince Chen were following Prince Li so Prince Li's decision also represented both of them. If it was successful, naturally one would be raised to heavens but if it failed then all of them will fall into misfortune. This was the shared delights and common hardships that was agreed upon in the beginning. His heart sighed slightly and he could only hop that during the assignation of Shen Mi out tomorrow, everything would be carried out smoothly. The night was as dark as ink and when the winter wind blew out to one's face, it was so chilling and sharp as if someone was shaving one's face. The water that were drawn during the day had become ice at night and just like the buckets that were placed outside the room, on the second day, it would be stuck on the ground and unmovable. Up in the inn, in front of the windows, the purple-clad youth was standing with his hands at the back. His brows were tightly locked and one did not know what he was thinking about. A snow-white dove flew in from outside and landed on the window sill in front. There was a layer of thin ice on its body and perhaps was surprised to be flying in such a cold weather. Zi Jingxing took the little silver tube from the pigeon's leg before throwing the pigeon behind him. The charcoal was burning in the room making it warm. The pigeon flew onto the study table in the room and stuffed its head into the little bowl of corn kernels. Zi Jingxing took out the small piece of paper from the silver tour and started reading. Afterwards he then threw it into the stove to be destroyed. Tai Yi walked in from outside and greeted Zi Jingxin's back, Master. The carriage is parent to return to the capital. Zi Jingxing replied with an him sound. Tai Yi however did not retreat and looked at Zi Jingxing's back view, as if hesitating to speak about something. Speak if there is something to be said. Zi Jingxing said without turning around. Tai Yi quaked and quickly said, Master, there is news from the Ding capital. These days Shen Xin is searching for a suitable young talent for fifth Shen young lady seemingly having intention for marriage. Zi Jingxing did not turn back. Tai Yi looked at the straight back view of the other party and he did not know why but he felt that his head was becoming numb. He did not know if he should say these things and he complained in his heart. Ji Yu Xu and Zhe Aoyang of the Ding capital side did not mention about this matter in the letter that was sent over. Tai Yi mentioned it now. In the future Zi Jingxing would blame both of them and it would look like Tai Yi was the one who provoked it. However if one do not speak of it, this issue mattered a lot so if Zi Jingxing knew of it by himself, the matter would have become big and he did not need to work a personal bodyguard and it was likely that he would have lost his life too. Between loyalty and life, Tai Yi would choose the latter decisively. He said, Su Ming Feng of the Su family, Lu Ling of the Lu family and Feng Zizhan the eldest son of the Feng family, had all paid a visit to the Shen mansion. Feng Zizian? The youth turned around and stared into Tai Yi's eyes before asking, 
Why did Feng Zhi's Yan pay a visit? Tai Yi's entire back was cold but he thickened his skin and said, because Shen Xin is anxious to marry 5th Shen young lady off due to the news that was spread from the palace that the crown prince has the intention to marry 5th Shen young lady as a secondary consort. Then Shen family did not wish for 5th young lady to marry into the eastern palace and wanted to marry 5th Shen young lady before the imperial edict arrives. The young lady of the Feng family and fifth young lady are good friends thus she had specially look for her older brother to solve the issue. When did the news spread from the palace? Zi Jingxing asked slowly but the voice seemed to be coated with a layer of ice. Tai Yi did not even dare to look at Zi Jingxing's eyes as he lowered his head all the way to the ground, five days ago. The news five days ago only reaches now? Zi Jingxing did get furious but instead laughed. The beautiful pair of peach blossoms eyes seemed to have anger. This prince do not know when did one start raising a bunch of useless things. The air in the room got cold and seemed to be even colder than outside. Even with the warm charcoal burning, the pigeon on the table lightly cooed and hid its head under its feathers. Tai Yi felt like weeping but had no tears and still had to finish the words that he had not spoken. Today the palace send a message to the Shen family for 5th Shen young lady to enter the palace alone tomorrow as the empress has something to discuss. Before the voice landed, one saw a flash of the handsome purple clad youth's figure and he was already at the doorway as draped the fox fur cloak over before saying coldly, prepare the horse. Zi Yi was startled, master. Isn't the seat off tomorrow morning? Zi Jing Xing glanced at him indifferently and Tai Yi shuddered not daring to say anything more. On this night, the wind and snow accompany each other, making the cold air enter one's bones. Some people were on the bed turning over, unable to sleep, some people were in a luxuriously residence planning an assignation conspiracy. There was also some people who were taking for granted as they living in the imperial palace and there was people riding on prestigious breed of horse galloping in the oncoming wind and snow thousands of lists. 1 Li equals 500 meters, away. Some people were happy, some people were in sorrow, some people were restless, some people were as pleased as a bunch. In the vast country of Ming Chi that looked like a painting, the dance and music in the Ding Capital rose and laughter was heard everywhere as the year was closing but no one could see the turbulent times under the Clam Lake. In the residence of Prince Ding, in a certain room, there was someone who was playing against oneself. The male's green robes were natural and graceful and there was a disorder chess game on the table. The white and black pieces were intertwined on the place and looked extremely complicated. For every step that was taken, he had to think for a long time that it seemed that it was down to the bottleneck but he could not place the black pieces in his hands down. The light slightly moved and seemed to be almost extinguished when he got up and poured in more oil and the room brightened. The male's brows were as light as breeze and as clear as moon, and were of an air of modest gentleman. There was also arrogance in his heart but between his eyes. There seemed to be some sorrow. This person was Pei Lang. Pei Lang looked at the wind and snow night scene and sighed deeply. Fu Zayu Yi's chess piece move was indeed a good one. Redirecting the waters of calamity to the east. No matter if it was successful or fail, there would not be any trace of relationship with Fu Zayu Yi. No matter what the result was, the crown prince would be in misfortune. Prince Zhu and Prince Li in bad luck, or the Shen family. To Fu Zayu Yi, it was a good thing. With such a move, Shen Miao almost did not have any other's routes to go. Even there was, it would only be an inferior move. To sum it up for this round, Fu Zayu Yi would not lose. Pei Lang was somewhat worried for Shen Miao. He also did not know why was he worried for Shen Miao. If Shen Miao died, then he could follow Fu Zayu Yi rightfully and properly. Fu Zayu Yi replied on him heavily and if he did not read it incorrectly, this person had the abilities of a monarch and in the future fowls and dogs like him would turn into immortals. There would be endless riches and glory and it would also be better to protect Liu Ying. However, he was still reluctant to see Shen Miao lose. These days Fu Zayu Yi suspected that there is a traitor in the residence and had doubled the guards in the residence of Prince Ting that even a housefly could not fly in, 
much less sending information out. He did not have any way to communicate with Shen Miao and could only be secretly anxious. Hearing that Shen Miao would be going to the palace alone, coincidentally, he was also going to the palace tomorrow. Even though it was as the aid of Fu Ziyu Yi, he was still an low-ranked official. Shen Miao did not have any route left but at the end of the road, will there be any other alternatives of survival? After a moment, Pei Lang looked at the chess game in front of it and it was in a predicament and there was not necessary to continue playing. One of his hands grabbed one of the legs of the board and suddenly turned his hand over. Just a light lift made all board filled with chess pieces fall onto the floor with crisp sounds. The ground was in a mess. Nothing of the original game could be seen. 